Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about solar panels and specifically just how many can you hook into your Goal Zero Yeti before it explodes. As usual, things got out of hand. So after my review of the folding TP solar panels from a few months ago, I had a ton of questions in the comments about the even smaller folding panels that they offer. So I decided to reach out to them and ask if they'd send me some review units. And they were kind enough to send me, well, a whole bunch. And the nice thing is these come in a lot of different sizes. There's a 30, a 60, a 100, and 120. In this green bag, I have four 100 watt folding panels. It's a teeny tiny space, super dense, basically the same size as my Yeti 1000. I have 400 watts of solar power. So taking a closer look at the 100 watt panel, it's essentially the same panels as the large folding panels but these ones are chopped up into much smaller pieces and it basically gets rid of all the extra overhead. There's just a thin piece of fabric that wraps around it with a Velcro closure, the standard junction box that you see on all the TP solar panels, and that's pretty much it. And deploying these is super simple. You just flatten them out and then unfold them one more time and you're in business. These are much more of a solar blanket in the sense that there's not a lot of rigidity between the panels. The panels themselves are nice and rigid, but there's a lot of connections. So you're going to want to lie these things flat. In my case, I can fit four perfectly on my table. So I want to connect these to my Yeti 1000, uh, but you can see all over the Yeti, there's all sorts of warnings about putting too much power in and causing the whole thing to blow up. So I thought I'd spend a little bit of time and just talk about how much power you are supposed to be able to plug in to a Yeti 1000. So my generation of Yeti has a built-in PWM charge controller that's not super efficient. Now, you want to think about the PWM charger as a system. So it can handle up to 360 watts of solar power total. Now, that can be distributed among any combination of inputs. And it's important to stay within the limits of each input type. So there's eight millimeter plugs. There's one on the front and there's one inside the cover and that can handle up to 120 Watts. And then there's the app or Anderson power pole connector on the front. And that's for high powered connections and that can handle itself up to 360 Watts. Now that doesn't mean that you should plug 120 into each eight millimeter and then 360 into the app. You want to stay as a system at 360 Watts or below. But remember that's actual input wattage, not the sum of the watts of your solar panels because you're only gonna get about 75 or 80% of the rated power. Now, if you also have the optional MPPT module, that gives you a whole nother charging system and that's additive. So that has a pair of eight millimeter inputs and it also has a app input and so that whole system can handle another 360 watts so in total if you put both systems together you should be able to have about 720 watts of actual solar input before you start hitting into thermal problems and the new yeti x series has some big improvements so the inverter has gone from 1500 watts to 2000 watts and now it has a built-in mppt charger. So uh, what that really means is you're going to still have the two eight millimeter plugs, but the app input now is going to handle up to 600 watts, which is really impressive. And in the area where they talk about charge time, they even say that you could use six 200 watt panels for a total of 1200 watts of charging input. And that's quite a bit more. In fact, it's double what the Yeti 1000 says. All right, so let's go ahead and start plugging stuff in and seeing how far we can go with this thing. So I'm starting with a Yeti that is basically empty. Uh, however, today is partly cloudy. There's a bit of haze and there definitely are clouds. So this is not ideal conditions. Uh, and if we plug these four 100 watt panels in, 
we're getting uh, 245 watts of input. And I did that into the MPPT for the most efficient charge. So I think we can go a little further though. So what I wanted to do is deploy some of the other panels that I own. So here they are. So I now am going to hook up a pair of Boulder 100 panels. And these are the Goal Zero panels. They're glass and aluminum, they're very heavy. And uh, these are sort of my reference panels. I use these to compare to every other panel. And in addition to that, we're going to connect a pair of TP Solar folding 60 watt panels. So that's 120 watts and a 120 watt folding panel. So that's another 240 watts. So now we're at 840 watts of solar panels. So it's important to remember that there's a very big difference between the rating on your panels and how much power you're actually going to get based on how they're angled and atmospheric conditions. So even with all those panels, we're getting about 450 watts. Uh, obviously, if I had a sunnier day, I think I'd do much better. But you can see that even when I hit a few clouds, this plummets down to double digits. And it's all because of those pesky clouds. Nothing you can do about that. So I think the lesson here is more panels are always a good thing. So keeping that advice in mind, let's add some more panels. So I have a pair of these TP Solar 60 watt panels. So we'll go ahead and hook these ones up. And I don't want to overload the app input. So I'm going to plug these ones into some of the eight millimeter ports just to keep things balanced out. So at this stage, when I did the math, I had 960 watts of solar panels and you know, we had to hit a thousand. So I scratched around and I have this Rock Pals 60 watt folding panel and I've been meaning to review this. And so I figured I'll just deploy it and plug the eight millimeter in, in the place underneath the top cover. So remember that's also a valid input for the PWM charge controller. So here we are everyone, 1,020 watts of solar panels plugged into our Yeti 1000. Pretty epic. So the good news is the Yeti did not start on fire. It did not blow up. It's fine with a thousand watts of solar panels plugged into it, as long as you have kind of a cloudy day. So we're getting about 500 watts, which, you know, is to be expected. Uh, solar panels really go downhill quick as soon as any sort of clouds or haze come into the picture. But the nice thing is if you have a lot of panels, they will still work even on a pretty cloudy day. If I only had 200 watts of panels right now, I really wouldn't be charging much at all. And it's worth noting that as a battery gets pretty much in the last 10 to 15%, the charge rate will slow down significantly. So you can see here, it's only charging at about 100 watts. And that's because we're at 93%. Now, if I take this space heater and I turn it on low, what happens is because there's a heavy load, it can accept more power. So now it's using all the solar charge. And so now it's well over 300 Watts. And I just want to point out that the Yeti is a beast. So I can be pulling in over 300 Watts of solar power and outputting 1400 Watts for the space heater. So a lot of other solar generators can't handle that high volume of input and output simultaneously. Now, I bet some of you are sitting here wondering, well, how much of that low output is due to the weather versus the fact that I have so many solar panels that are lying flat? Because we all know that an angled solar panel is always going to be a little more efficient. So I was honestly curious about that myself. So as a test, I took a Boulder 100 panel and I propped it up on the included stand, which is at a relatively optimal angle. And I measured the output and then under the same exact solar conditions, I laid it down and I checked the output again. And what I found is the difference was anywhere from say 7% to maybe 10 or 11%. It did vary a little bit. But the important thing is that the angled solar panel needed to be perfectly angled with the sun. And in my south facing conditions, you actually have to angle the panels very differently throughout the course of the day. 
So the way I look at it is a flat solar panel, yes, might be less efficient than a perfect angled panel, but it will be much better throughout the course of the day if you don't have the time to babysit them. So that's my two cents. Let me know what you think in the comments. So one final thing that I thought was kind of funny, on this table, I have two Boulder 100 storage bags. In the bottom is a regular Boulder 100, so it's 100 watts, but the top bag is different. I stuffed it with as many folding solar panels as I could, and it's amazing. I have 800 watts of solar panels in the same volume. It weighs a little bit more, but not really that much. So these things are amazing. They're super light, super portable, and they're just honestly, I think a much better fit for a portable rig like the Yeti 1000. So let me know what you think in the comments. Please subscribe and uh, thanks for watching.